tonight find out about a shooting at a local apartment complex. Plus, we'll take a look at Troy's new SGA officer. Stay tuned. Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the worldwide campuses of Troy University, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Trojan Vision Nightly News for March 3rd, 2011. I'm Bailey Majors. And I am Rachel Ellis. Thank you for joining us this evening. A morning shooting at a Troy apartment complex sent a man to the hospital. Around 11.30 this morning, an unidentified black male was shot at the Chandler Apartments on Fulmar Street. Reports say the man was shot in the chest. He was transported to Troy Regional and then airlifted to Baptist South in Montgomery. It appears the shooting was a domestic dispute. At last report, the shooter was not in police custody, although police did find a vehicle that fit the description of the suspect's car not far from the scene of the shooting. After two weeks, Troy student government has a full slate of officers for next school year. Students voted in a runoff election yesterday for the two remaining offices, Vice President for Legislative Affairs and Clerk. The new VPLA will be Tia Shallow and the new clerk will be Jared Morgan. They will join the other three officers elected in a general election last week. Daryl Lasser at President, Nicole Acuzio at Vice President for Campus Activities, and Mallory Mann at Secretary. The new officers will be sworn in on April 14th. Pike County's Chamber of Commerce now has a new home in downtown Troy, but that's not the only change for the Chamber. Tiffany Lester has the story. There are some big changes for the Pike County Chamber of Commerce as they introduce the public to a new building and a new president Thursday morning. Kathleen Sauer is taking the reins of the Chamber just as they move into their new home on the square in downtown Troy. The move to a new building is something that they hope will improve the way they do business. Well, this building is uh, going to help us with our, uh, our footprint in the county, and we are really excited to be here. It's, um, it, it's a, a landmark. It's an iconic place that, that helps us to uh, meet our businesses and uh, expose our businesses, uh, give us a, a larger identity and, uh, and a larger footprint in Pike County and the rest of the, the southeast. Sauer, whose previous experience includes 15 years as president of the Enterprise Chamber and most recently worked under Governor Bob Riley in Montgomery, says that she hopes both the new home of the chamber and addition to the team will help propel the Pike Chamber to a new level of helping the community. Oh, Pike County can expect a lot because we're going to have a larger presence with our new building here. Uh, we're going to be doing the same as we've done in the past. But now I think that we can look forward to a larger strategic plan. And um, each week, I guess, we will probably be announcing something new that we're going to be doing. And we want everybody to be involved. And so all those things that you do now, but maybe there's something that we need to be doing, please let us know because that's part of, uh, part of engaging the community. All of these changes are part of a bigger plan that, according to Drinkwater, have been years in the making. Our vision for Pike County is that we would be a, a hub for business in southeast Alabama and that we would uh, bring businesses uh, more exposure uh, through being in this location, uh, through our uh, brand identity, um, makeover uh, that we started two years ago. Uh, it's part of a greater strategic plan that we've undertaken and we're, uh, we're really excited uh, to, to be taking that to fruition. Tiffany Lester, Troy Trojan Vision News. The Chamber's new office is on East Church Street right off the square in downtown Troy. They plan on holding a grand opening on March 22nd and the public is invited to attend. Students saw some Troy faculty members in rare form last night. Judson Gardner has the story. Students went to the studio of downtown Troy Wednesday night to receive C's and D's from their teachers. The musical notes, because the Troy University teachers from the music department were showing the public what they do best. Tonight was a faculty showcase. Uh, we, I had the opportunity to play with some of my uh, good colleagues, Tim Phillips and Katrina Phillips on clarinet, Dr. Wee Ting Young on piano, Dr. Adam Blackstock on uh, 
marimba. Uh, my two trumpet ensembles played, and we had some pieces written for us by a dear old friend, Carl Walrath, who is a professor emeritus. Dr. Zingara asked a lot of the faculty if we'd be interested in playing. And of course, as usual, I say yes. The Concerts at the Studio Series is an annual event for Troy University's Music Department and the Johnson Center for the Arts. We want to bring the arts, and especially Troy University musicians and artists downtown, you know, kind of connect the university with downtown. And uh, this has just been a fabulous series. This is the third in our Concerts at the Studio Series. This is a series of free concerts we have once a month. Uh, that showcases the very best we have to offer at the School of Music. It was designed for two reasons. One is to take a little bit of pressure off the performing facilities on campus. And the other thing is, is to reach an audience that may not come to can uh, campus ordinarily. Many attendees enjoyed listening to an instrument that they might not hear on a regular basis. The marimba. I love the marimba. We don't always have the marimba. The music was just wonderful. It's just like bubbly. I mean, it's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it just gives you such a wonderful feeling. Dr. Blackstock had some inspiration behind his song choice. The uh, Caritas by Michael Burrett in three movements uh, based on Caritas being the Latin word for cherished ones or especially children, the idea of unconditional love. And choosing the piece to play uh, originally was after I became a father myself. Judson Garner, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The next concert at the studio is scheduled for April. Five Troy University fraternity brothers are making their walk hard event a tradition over spring break. The boys are packing up their special socks and plenty of water and are headed to the coast. I had a chance to talk to them as they prepare for the big adventure. We're all in pain and tired and hot and burnt and dehydrated. But we're walking hard. Walking 140 miles over a six-day period seems exhausting, but five brothers of the Alpha Tau Omega fraternity are doing it all over again. Walk Hard began in 2010, all because of an inspiration at a fast food restaurant. Long story, uh, to be honest with you, saw this like ho possibly homeless guy walk down the road uh, in a Superman outfit and carrying an American flag. And me and Austin were sitting at Dairy Queen and saw him and we were like, what is that guy doing? Is this easy crazy? Or they're like, what, does he have a purpose? Maybe like what? And then we were talking like, what if we did that? What if we just walked, you know, till we couldn't walk any further? And we're like, oh, that's the coast. I'm like, what's the coast? Panama City. And just kind of like it grew and evolved. The three-man Walk Hard crew received attention across the nation last year as they walked from Troy, Alabama to Panama City, Florida in an effort to raise money for children with diabetes. But how did they decide where to donate the $3,000? Uh, one of the guys wanted to go, his name is Edward Feeder. He, uh, he wanted to go, but he has type 1 diabetes. And the doctor said it, he could bank it, but the doctor said it, would be, it wouldn't be wise because he wouldn't have any way to regulate his insulin. You know, he'd have to keep that cold. And so we were thinking, like, wow, you know, never thought diabetes could actually hold somebody back from something. After the 2010 journey, several sponsors joined in to help make the event even bigger. State Farm has actually uh, picked up our title sponsorship and uh, they're giving uh, $1,500. And so it's the State Farm Walk Hard event now. Uh, Red Bull has jumped on board. Uh, some, some local uh, businesses have jumped on board. Some families and some friends. This year, five guys will hit the trail to Panama City and the money will go to the Alabama Special Camp for Children and Adults. Knowing that I'm spending my spring break doing something to help other people um, it's, it's an unselfish thing, I guess you could say, I'm sacrificing my time. But I, I think it's great, you know, providing these kids an opportunity to go to camp, something that we take, it, take for granted. The State Farm Walk Hard event will kick off tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock on the quad. If you would like to donate, you can go to www.walkhard.org. Now taking a look at news from around the state, an Alabama judge has sentenced a man to die for the murder of a college freshman. The judge imposed the sentence Wednesday on 26-year-old Courtney Lockhart. He was convicted of capital murder last year in the gunshot slaying of 18-year-old Lauren Burke in 2008. In next in state news, a 21-year-old man has been released on $15,000 bond after being charged with making terrorist threats involving Chilton County schools. Sheriff Kevin Davis says Donald Jason Giles posted threats of a school shooting on a social network site. Davis says the threats did not specify a school or say who was targeted. 
And last in state news, the University of South Alabama police say a student who described being sexually assaulted while jogging admits the story was untrue. The university police chief said yesterday the student will not face criminal charges for the report. University officials won't say whether she might face disciplinary action.